Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about stacks. Now I know this isn't a computer science class so I'll try not to bore you with the entire background, however let's just talk a little bit more generally about this concept known as a data structure. So a data structure is just a way of storing data. You know we've talked about lists, we can use lists to store data, well there's other data structures we could use as well, we could use a set or we could use a dictionary and so forth. So there's a ton of different ways to basically structure data and one of those ways is known as a stack. And we're actually going to use another data structure, the list, to create a stack. So consider a list like a fundamental building block and we're just going to just use it a certain way to create a stack structure. So what is a stack structure? Well, the best way to understand it is to literally visualize it as a stack of something. So let's say we have a stack of plates. You can add plates to this stack by putting them on the top. And anytime you want to get a plate off of the stack, you take it off of the top. Only psychopaths pick up the plates and take them from the bottom. We're not going to do that because that's not how a stack works. Hey, you mind grabbing me that uh, SQL book? Sure. Let's see, where is it? SQL, there we go. Here you go. That's not how stacks work. So you can consider it like so. We have some stack and we're going to use a list to represent this. And what we do is we add an element to the stack. So we say stack dot append, and then we pass some data in this like a plate. So we will call this plate A. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to say stack dot pop. And this is going to remove that item and return it. So what we can do is we can print it to see that it was removed. So we run this and it just says plate A. Nothing too crazy, we're literally just using a list like we've been. However, let's go through adding another element just to see the order of this. So stack.append and we'll say plate B. And we will run this stack.pop one more time, so like so. And running this now, the output is plate B, plate A. So visualize this in your head. You set down plate A first then you set down plate B on top of it. If you want to remove these plates, you start from the top and grab plate B, then you grab plate A. So now what I wanna do is I wanna modify some code we wrote earlier, where we're basically getting user input to create a list of favorite vegetables. So this is what our code looks like. We ask the person to enter the foods they like, and we do this in an indefinite loop until they type in Q. Well, what I want to do now is I want to give them the option to remove food from the list as well, not just add food to the list. So instead of saying Q to quit, what we can do is we can actually say R to remove, then Q to quit, and we can check for both of these. So you can see by default we're appending the data, but we could actually check another case so we can say L if stir.lower data is equal to R, now we're going to remove the data. So what we do is we say faves dot pop. And we can even make a little print statement so it's clear. And we'll just say removing and then whatever the element is. So what's gonna happen now? It's going to remove the data, but then it's going to go down to the next line and append data. We don't wanna do that. We're using R to remove data. So what we need to do is we actually need to use another keyword, continue. And what this is going to do is it's going to continue to the next iteration, skipping anything that comes after this line. If you want another way to think about it, you could just use an else. So it would look like this. And then just indent this here. So you can think of it as three cases. The first case being where the data inputted is Q. The other one where the input is R, where we remove data. And then lastly, is the default case where we don't put Q and R and that is the data being added to the list. So let's just run this, see if anything is broken. And I gotta get rid of these three quotation marks. Let me just, so let's just run this and see if everything is working. All right, hit enter after each food, R to remove, Q to quit. So we'll say salad. And I think it's working, but let's just print each time so that way we can see. So at the end of each loop iteration, we'll just update the people by saying print and passing in faves in here. All right, so that way each time we put in data, we can see it. So we'll start with kale. There we go, we got kale, spinach, and you can see it's adding it to the list here, broccoli. 
All right, now we want to remove some vegetables because I just added something, broccoli, and I'm starting to second guess. I'm not sure I want that in there. So all we have to do is type R and you can see it removes broccoli. So where does the stack component come into this? Well, it's which side is being removed. So we add in broccoli, consider putting broccoli on the top of the stack if everything was stacked from bottom to top. So kale is at the bottom of our stack, consider it like a sandwich, kale's on the bottom, spinach is on top of that, and then broccoli is on top of the spinach. So if we want to remove broccoli, we just take it off the top, which is done with pop. And then what we can do is we can continue to add data. So we'll say bok choy and adds it to the list. And you can see that we can continue to work with this program, adding and removing data until we're completely satisfied. And when we hit Q, it prints everything in the list at the final state, which is this right here. All right, so let's just take a moment to summarize here and make sure we understand everything. The stack is an example of a data structure. And it's a very simple data structure because we don't actually have to implement anything new. We are just using a list that already exists. It just matters how we use the list. We always add data using append and we always remove data using pop. That is how we use a list as a stack. The stack itself can be visualized as piling things on top of each other, putting kale first and then adding spinach on top of it. And then lastly, adding bok choy on top of the spinach. If you need to remove anything, you have to remove from the last element that was added in, which in this case is bok choy. So another way to think about it is the first item in is the last item out. So it's first in, last out. Or the last item in, bok choy, is the first item out when you're trying to remove data. So last in, first out. So you will hear the stack data structure as first in, last out, or last in, first out. Philo or LIFO, <laughs> kind of stupid acronyms. However, it does express what we're trying to achieve with the stack. Then the only other thing to summarize is just understanding this code. We have essentially three cases. The first being Q, which is just quitting. The next being R, which is to remove data using pop. And then lastly, if neither of those are the case, then we add the data to the list and print it each iteration to see the progress. And then when finally when we're done, we iterate through the whole list, whatever's in there, and print it. Oh, that was a lot. So apologies if I rambled, but I really just wanna make sure you understand this fully because we're gonna be using this a lot. And if you're wondering when you might do something like this, an example is anytime you take a path and you need to backtrack to where you started, you're gonna use a stack data structure. So in this example here, you can see we added broccoli, but then we're like, eh, I'm not so sure I want broccoli. And we backtracked and went back to just spinach. So I actually use this data structure for a maze solving algorithm. So you go down a path and then you're like, oh, there's a wall there. So we need to back up to where we just were. A lot of the algorithms that are classified as backtracking algorithms are going to be using a stack to actually go through the algorithm process. So that's all I got for you in this video. Next up, we're gonna be talking about a variation called the Q. And no, not this kind of Q. So stay tuned and I'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe.